Hello, everyone. Today, we are welcoming Charles Eisenstein, who was one of the first people we reached out to when we wanted to start this whole summit because he's a big hero of the, especially Katrine's, but also mine. And yeah, you said, what about Charles Eisenstein one, one day? And I was like, yeah, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, And, when Katrine, and then you just replied like, instantly. Yeah, which was really amazing. Yeah. So you woke me up one morning and said, look at this. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Yay. So yeah. we've been we've been following you for quite some time. And uh, you you popped up here again. And we we are living in crazy times. And you are somehow managing to stand in the middle where we may be off in one ditch and some people off in another ditch. You You seem to be able to to hold some middle line where you can speak to uh, a, a sense, like a common sense and uh, airing both parties' point of view in this whole crazy thing we're standing in the middle of. So you seem to be very much, uh, I wouldn't say on your own, but your own person. Um, so so how do you manage how do you manage to do that how do you manage to stay unclouded or how you would say yeah um that's an illusion that i'm managing to stay unclouded and firm and solid in myself uh you're judging that maybe by my writings and by the maybe interviews and things that you listen to yeah um, but in between, I often go through long periods of turmoil and doubt and losing my center. And when I'm in those states, I won't write about the things that are contingent on, on that. Um, sometimes I'll, I'll say, hey, I'm in a real state of doubt and confusion right now. I might talk about that because that's true. That's something that I do know. What I can know is how I'm feeling right now. Yeah. Um, but I've in this last couple of years, I've had gone through the experience enough times of being knocked off my center, dissociated from what I actually know, and then coming back to it again, that I'm a bit more stable now. And I recognize the process and have actually gained some degree of strength and wisdom from um, from 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 the process right that's that's quite amazing like we i think we uh, can only speak for myself but i I've, I've noticed the same that it takes it takes shorter and shorter time to come back into the center you're speaking of an, a, a knowingness and many people would say well you can only know things that have been uh, quantified by data analysts, scientists, and all this, but there's also this sense of of a, a, a deeper a deeper knowing. Like we can be pulled off course by somebody said this thing, and I believe it because that's my prejudice. But then there's also this under underlying current of a of a, a deep and knowing. And when I read what you're writing on your blog or listening to your book uh, books plural um i feel there's a there's a tapping into and a channeling of you might find it pretentious you use the word wisdom but there is like even for someone as young as you uh there's there is a there is like a, a something there like there's a uh a solidity, a wisdom, and a knowing there that uh, that you're channeling into. So how how have you come to that? Like how have you been able to access that wisdom and bring it into the world? Uh, okay, so for one thing, I'm not that young. Um, Fifty three years old. And in the last few years, in a certain sense, I've aged an awful lot because of encounters with mortality, mm -hmm. encounters with death. That's what makes a person wise. So to the extent that I have any wisdom, it's because of that. 
mm. um, that's beyond mere intelligence. Um, you know, I, uh, my, my mother passed last year. Uh, we were very close. And, and so through her terminal illness and her passing, I um, really came to face some things. I think this is true of anybody whose mother passes. Yeah. And the main thing is like the realization really sinks in that, wow, that's going to happen to me too. Mm. Together with, I guess, the overall heightened awareness or even phobia of death in society during the COVID era, and then also health problems that I had experienced. Um, and, and there's 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 more, but but basically many situations, many, many conditions converged to make me face mortality and thereby be much less in a state of delusion. Because the biggest delusion that is especially prominent in modern societies is the idea that you're not going to die, that you're somehow immortal. This manifests as the fetish for youth. You know how youth is displayed in advertising. It's the euphemisms for death that we don't actually say death. Um, it's the funeral industry, which keeps corpses sequestered from society. It's a medical system that tries to postpone death at any cost. Mm. Uh, there, there, it's the distancing of us from the death of plants and animals that, that contribute to our food. I mean, so many ways. And the whole distancing from nature, we just don't see mm. that death is a part of life. So the this primary delusion of modernity keeps us all in the dark. And that's why when people get older and it becomes harder to maintain that illusion that they become wise. Wise meaning it's kind of silly to do stuff just for yourself anymore because there isn't gonna be a self uh, pretty soon, you know? And so what actually is valuable then? It's what you put into the world. Mm. So that's like um, th this, it's this cloud that the, the light, the sunlight of, of the truth is, is starting to dispel as I get older. And sometimes, you know, people gain this wisdom much earlier if they have a near-death experience or if they have a close brush with death. And what do you feel then? You feel grateful. Like that's another part of it. Um, greater gratitude for life, recognition of the preciousness of life. Um, so I'm not sure how this translates into my work, into my writings and, and things like that. Um, I mean, after all the books, you know, my books were all written before, before all this happened. Mm. I guess another thing that brings wisdom is failure, which is a kind of a death also. The disintegration of your hopes and ambitions and expectations of life. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the truth. So yeah. I've, I've, you know, had That's that. That's what hurts, right? That yeah that's what hurts mm -hmm. yeah and, and trauma yeah um also i don't know i mean i'm not sure how much like none of this is going to be a how actually and your question was framed as a how so i'm not sure how much i want to theorize about why i have certain gifts and not others. Mm -hmm. um, each of us is deployed by an orchestrating intelligence of the world in, into the perfect set of gifts and challenges and difficulties and blessings that is necessary for the evolution of the world. And it's not a question of one person earning or deserving necessarily um, any abilities, any genius, any wisdom. Um, 
it's just that we're all deployed in a different capacity. And, and, and I think that trying to understand that, trying to explain that too much may not actually be useful. And there's a kind of a, um, an implicit devaluing of some roles and valorizing of other roles when we say, well, how can I be more like so-and-so? Mm. How do they do it? Not that there isn't something to learn from, you know, a great footballer or a great musician or, you know, a great scientist. As long as we don't assume that they are more important than any other person. Mm. Because I think, yeah, we have something to learn from a great scientist, a great athlete, a great singer. But we also have something to learn from an amazing grandmother, an amazing daycare worker, an amazing farmer. Like these people who are not celebrated in the world and who our modern logic of scale, the industrial logic of scale casts as less important. Because after all, they're only doing a small thing. And what about the big things? How do I be like that? So I would say like, maybe more like, how do I be like, you know, my, my grandmother yeah. um, who was so, had so much love, you know? And, and so, yeah, I guess I just really long-winded way maybe of saying, um, I'm a little bit uncomfortable with the question uh, because and I'm not just being modest here, you know, oh, let's not talk about how great I am. Like, <laughs> yeah, like I, I, I think I am, you know, very gifted in the ways that I'm gifted. Yeah, yeah. Well, you have, you have yeah. a knowing and you can see things clearly and communicate it to others so it becomes clear because you have done that for years and years. Yeah, and I don't know where that comes from. No. No. It's just, I mean, I could theorize about it, but. It's not no. that important. It's not. Really. To, it wasn't to put you on a pedestal. It's more yeah. like how do how do we all access? Because as you say, we all have value. I mean, we are in a, especially in our part of the world, we're in a consumeristic society. So we consume someone like a football player or a scientist because they can produce something that we can all use in 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 that way. And in that way, we can also say that you are producing a wisdom we can all consume but it's more like a question of how do the people that are watching this how do they more readily access their own qualities their yeah. own wisdom so not as to put you or us or any of the other speakers necessarily on a pedestal but right. yeah. how do how do we do that uh, like we right. can because, yeah because i think many people have, have forgotten it or uh, are doubting themselves if right yeah yes so yes yeah that's a beautiful question um and again um i would say it's maybe not a how a how to <laughs> oh come on except that except that uh i guess if i want to turn it into a how i'd say yeah the first step is to connect with the part of you that knows that it's true that you have a sacred gift, that you are a sacred being, that you are perfectly configured to play a role that you know is important in a sense. Like you know that the choices you make in your life, the love that you give, the things that you create are important. Even if the rational mind can't say why it's important because it affected such a small sphere in this gigantic planetary mess, the, the mind can't make sense of it. But part of you knows that that even the time that you know maybe maybe your mother passed and maybe you were holding her hand and maybe that was a great comfort to her. And then she passed and no one even knows about it. It doesn't inspire anybody. It didn't change her that so she she died i mean she didn't go forth and do great things because of that so the rational mind is like what good did that do but part of you might recognize that that was maybe the most important thing you ever did yeah, yeah. yeah. so we have to stop gaslighting ourselves and demeaning uh 
and trivializing the things that on a soul level we actually know are why we're here and what is important and what we should be doing. But it's a matter of trusting the knowledge that we already have. And when you trust that knowledge and you hold it precious, then it is activated and opportunities for it to express itself, opportunities for you to express your gift, your wisdom, your, your precious capacities, these opportunities then they, they manifest. So, yeah, I mean, maybe that's a how, a how to, um, but I mean, it's something that is instantaneous. Like it's, it's available right now. It's not a hard journey right now. Any of us, all of us can be like, yep, it's true. I know it. I feel it. I love it. I celebrate it. I honor it. And I trust myself to know how to use it, to know how to do it. I know what to do. That's another thing. That truth of I know exactly what to do because I am alive stands alongside the truth of I have no idea what to do. Yeah. Hmm. On a mental level, we have no idea what to do. Somebody can argue that the most important thing for you to do is to fight climate change, or the most important thing for you to do is to fight racism, or the most important thing for you to do is to work outside the system or to work within the system, or like, and there's all kinds of smart guys, usually guys who have all these reasons why this is the important thing to do. But then somebody else, another smart guy comes and says, no, here's what should be done and here's how to do it. And I don't know. That's, that's the, that's the, I don't know what to do. Yeah. yeah. I know that place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But on, on the other hand, you know what to do. Just yeah. like my dog knows exactly what to do to be a dog. But also those smart guys, they are, they are external experts, like, and we need to like, at least yeah. that's true for me, tune in to ourselves and what, you, like you're, you're, the title of your book, like what our hearts tell us. Our hearts, yes. Yes. So that one of those experts may be saying the right thing for you, but you have to check in with your heart and see, is that the right thing for me? Right. Yeah. I mean, those, th that, that capacity of, of, you know, that kind of intelligence, it's, it's, it's got its purpose here too. The guys who can design things, you know, and make plans and design buildings and systems and technology, like that's a beautiful capacity. Earlier, you mentioned um, this idea that valid knowledge is the data that has been peer reviewed and vetted, you know, and, and okay, I'm not gonna discard that as useful, but at some point you have to decide, do I accept that? data. Yes. Do I accept this person's plan or that person's plan? And how do you make that choice? Then it, again, it comes down to the heart. Hmm. Um, and, and today, that's an especially important trust to have because the information environment is so conflictual now. Yes. You know, you can go down any rabbit hole and each one, it's like these separate reality bubbles. Yes. Like, how do you, how do you choose? How do you even, like, here's this data, here's this study. Well, how do you know that the, how, how do you know that the researchers were of high integrity? I mean, there's all these whistleblowers coming out now. Oh, this data was suppressed. You know, this was manipulated whistleblowers. Like, how do you know? It, we're, we we're right now, this is the kind of initiation that we're in right now. We're being yeah. forced almost as, as our, as our stories fall apart, as our meaning and sense of the world falls apart, we're entering this like bewilderment where we're, we're left with almost nothing else but to fall back on what do I know in my body for real? Mm. Yeah. But there comes there also comes a, a, a piece with, with that because when you look at all these external sources of, of knowledge, 
to me, there's a sense of being continuously at a some at this not this ease but this ease, and and there's this bewilderment you're talking about. But when I take it back to myself, to my heart, there's a there's a peace with 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 that that arises when I can take it back and I can listen to your words right now, I can hear, do they have a resonance in my heart? And when they do, then there's a sense of, of being at, at peace and connection mm -hmm. and connection. And that's, yeah. that's for me, a very big point It's like returning to connection. You're talking about, we have been disconnected from nature and everything else. We're disconnected from our grandparents. We put them in homes. We're disconnected from, yeah the earth when we go to a supermarket instead of growing our own produce or going to the local market our children when we send them off to school and daycare yeah yeah so it's disconnect after yeah. disconnect and 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 then we're like it's easy it's consumable and then we go home and then we feel miserable and alone but when we and connect, don't know what to do yeah yeah and then we look out to others and say, oh, he, uh, he had written a great book or he built this building and what have I done? Mm -hmm. I can't do that. But coming back to what you're saying, I can, I can learn from my grandma or my mom or my neighbor, but other people can learn from me too. I have value too. Maybe yes. that's, that's one of the hard pills to, to swallow in these times that I have value too. Because we are constantly told that we have no value, I yeah. think. And, and, and it can even seem selfish, you know, or like yeah. conceited to say, I have value too. I am a precious being. But it actually, to affirm your value, to celebrate your value, that is not just a selfish act. Because it also turns you into a powerhouse of positive change in the world. Because if you're not fully accepting, embracing your gifts, how are you gonna use them? Yeah. If you're not like, yeah, I am wonderful, then how are you gonna have the confidence to do wonderful things? Because the fact is you are wonderful. You are a miracle. And that's the truth. Living in obliviousness to the truth will, never bring as much good as living in the truth. The, the, the untruth would be that I'm more wonderful than somebody else. Mm, yeah. 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 And it seems like that's a, like the old paradigm we're moving out uh, of now. Mm. So that's a relief. Yeah. 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 Exciting times. Exciting times indeed. And we're so happy that you are here to uh, write about them and speak about them in a way that is... Uh, that many people can hear it, actually. That people can hear yeah. it, that resonates with our hearts. I mean, we are so thankful that you are here in the world with us. Yeah. Well, well thank you. Um, and it's also the other way around, that because there are people to hear, I become a you know their antenna and yeah. the, the 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 mouthpiece that speaks what's in their hearts so yeah yeah, yeah. you know it's a, a um that's another thing i would say about wisdom uh it's a collective function the the village elder the tribal elder is wise as a function of the relationship to the village or to the tribe and if they're not held in that respect, then for all practical purposes, their wisdom doesn't even exist. Mm -hmm. So here's a more general application of that. If you practice seeing everybody as a wise, wonderful, amazing being, then they become that in your relationship. One time I was holding a retreat. I've done this a few times, actually, where I, I divided the group in half and I had half of them wait in the room um, 
uh, in a chair with an empty chair in front of it. So there was like these little pairs of chairs around the room and, and I'm like, okay, you guys are the gurus. And, and the other people, they go on a little journey, they come back and they sit before the guru and they ask questions. And I told them, hold in your mind that the person you are going to sit in front of is an enlightened being that will speak wisdom to you. Stand in that story, hold them in that. And to the, the gurus, I say, know that you have access to any information that is required in this moment. Hold that of yourself. And so then the people came back in and they had a session with the guru and like, I mean, it was amazing the, the wisdom that was available. Like people were in tears. So just to say that, that this is a function, a capacity that is in every person and can be accessed in the right circumstances. And the right circumstances include how others are holding you and how you hold yourself. <clears throat> that's beautiful yeah I that's, like that. that's very beautiful it's yeah. very congruent like i i got a, i got that picture the other day that we're all walking antennae in uh, channeling in light into this darkness that we're in right now but each and every one of us as we open up we help like we are stem cells within a cancer cell that is healing it from the inside just by us allowing all this to come through so Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked what you just saw, head on over to whoselifeisitsummit.com forward slash podcast, where you can find full length episodes as well as in audio format. And we do a lot of other cool stuff. You can hang out with us and other like-minded individuals who want to create a world that works for everyone. And we do that on our platform where we can chat and we have Q and A's and exclusive interviews as well. So there's so much to get over there. So come on over and play with us.